Can we talk about the six types of audience roles? Mm -hmm. Okay, the first one is a visitor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the visitor is when you what you think of when you have an art gallery or a museum um, where the visitor comes in and they enjoy um, and appreciate works of art or objects or um, you know they come to learn they come to um, appreciate a place but they don't play a role in the story of the experience they are visitors to the place where. Uh, the environment, the story world is not affected by their presence. So this is the most common uh, type of uh, experience where people will go to a, you know, everything from a playground to a museum, they're visiting a place and they don't have an active role to play in the experience. So it's passive. Yes. Passive. Okay. And then number two is a spectator. Mm -hmm. That also sounds passive. Yeah. A spectator um, has... It is a more passive uh, participant as well. You could think of like um, sporting events or concerts, but there's a little bit of participation in that they can respond to the performer or to the athlete. They, you know, they can clap, they can scream, they can shout their support, all of the, or boo, right? Um, so there's a little bit more participation, but it's, it's still somewhat passive. It's not as... Uh, um, participatory as um, other forms of um, visitors. Number three is participant hyphen immersive. Mm -hmm. When you think about uh, some of the immersive experiences out there um, where they have projection mapping around a space and the, um, the, the environment reacts towards the participant that goes into this immersive space. Maybe you touch something and, you know, there's like fish, in an, uh, a digital fish in an aquarium, let's say. And if you, you can feed the fish by like, you know, touching on the wall or something like that. So there is a form of participation that requires you to engage with the immersive environment around you. It doesn't change the story in a drastic way, but it responds to you as you touch or um, perhaps uh, whatever kind of action that you do to create something that may have uh, um, a small consequence, but nothing that is going to change the outcome of the entire experience or the story. It's a light touch, light touch participation. Participant interactive. So uh, participant interactive is um, a little more engaging. Uh, perhaps it's a crank that you have to turn in order for this invention or this machine to work. Maybe it's some buttons that you have to push. Maybe it's, uh, you know, handles uh, that you have to pull and look through and discover. So there's a sense that it is interactive, that you are required to take some action in order to fully experience uh, the story and the world. And it's a great way for kids to um, explore the world around them. So I love seeing uh, museums and places where kids can just touch everything and interact with things so that they can learn about it. Um, science museums is a really great example of that. And uh, just really engaging, um, actively participatory type of activities uh, where you can really see, uh, you know, results and consequences to your to your actions. Number five, hero. So hero is one in which if you go through this experience and the story world, the characters, the experiences around you uh, have a direct consequence to your actions. So if you are going to meet with a character in a town, let's say in this world, um, whatever you say or do with this particular um, character is going to have very big consequences to the world. So this is really the most extreme form of immersive storytelling. How can you as a creator put your visitor into a hero role where they can change the consequences of the story and the world? And again, I go back to video games, you know, gaming uh, where you truly have this opportunity 
to change the, um, you know, the cho choose your own adventure type of format where you can um, change the outcome of your story and other characters' um, outcomes as well is the most extreme form of immersive storytelling that you can do. And I think we have yet to really see um, uh, an experience where they, it fully does that, where you can truly create uh, an outcome that is personal, extremely personal to you. It's difficult and challenging because you have, you know, mass groups of people, visitors, audiences coming to a place. So how can you create a story that's tailored only to you and personalized only to you when you're in this setting with crowds of people? And so there are different ways that you can do it. There's some that um, makes it a truly personal experience or just you and one other person. If you think about like um, some of the experiences out there in the world when you're traveling, let's say, and you have a private guide who takes you through a safari or whatever it is, right? There's there's varying ways for you to be the hero of that story and that journey, um, but it's it's still one that we're we've touched the surface of in immersive storytelling, and I think we have a long way to go to really create something that is truly um, that truly makes you feel like you are the hero of the story. And I'm really excited to see where it can take us. And then creator, last but not least. This is one that I think, gosh, you know, when I think about where immersive storytelling can go and how I'm seeing the trends of what, you know, my kid and the younger generations are doing in their own free time, things like Roblox and Minecraft and Fortnite, where, and, you know, being YouTubers, there is a desire to create and express yourself in uh, uh, your own way. How do we create an immersive storytelling experience or world where we can embrace you as a creator? And this is perhaps touching on you know, the metaverse or touching on something that, you know, AR or something that is more virtual. But is there a world where there is a combination of like the physical, the digital, the virtual, where it feels like perhaps there's no boundaries anymore, right? And it, for a lot of people, that can be really scary to think about, you know, what's real and what's not. Um, but when I see what's, what's emerging in this world and how we all want to have that sense of ownership and uh, a sense of creation, I think that this is really going to be what's going to be very exciting in this particular format of immersive storytelling. How can you create a world that is specific to you and have visitors perhaps come to your world, experience the story that you set up? We see that in TV and movies and video games. Maybe we can see that in the physical world. Maybe we can see that in a way that is um, scalable, uh, you know, that other people from some other part of the world can come and experience the world that you've created. And how do you create something, you know, invite others to come and co-create with you? Um, how do you create environments that change with time, that evolve over time, that perhaps does it organically. I know that it, it's something that um, I'm very excited to see because it really pushes how we think about how we perceive the world and what is, you know, all my life since I was a child, I think there's always been, you know, multiple worlds that I live in in my head. And imagine if there is going to be a landscape where you can go in and out of those worlds as you please, that it doesn't just live in your head, that it can be uh, um, manifested into something that other people can see and share and that you can continually change and evolve into uh, an ecosystem that other people can come in and collaborate as well. And again, we're seeing it in video games, we're seeing it in all of this, but how do we, how can we bring that into 
the physical world.